We are now going to get into John chapter 16, and it is full of information that you will need as you're walking with Jesus, as you deal with the difficulties of your day. Prepare for what is ahead. I'm glad you're here. For John 16, he is speaking during the week, during Holy Week, between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. And he has a lot to say, and in order for us to cover all the chapters, we are taking it a day at a time, and looking at what he said to his friends, those last words, those last lessons, before he goes to the cross. We're going to see him give information that they will need, because they will be treated badly before long things will be tough, and the Holy Spirit is coming, and he's going to explain in this chapter more about what the Holy Spirit will do, how he will work in their lives, and how he will work in the whole of the world. And we are going to discover more about Jesus, more about the relationship, more about the greater purpose that God has for his people, for you and me in this day as we look at this chapter and as Jesus begins to explain these things to us. So thank you for joining me here. Again, we'll be in the New Living Translation. And if you can find that, uh, you have one of those uh, nearby, an app or a Bible, pick it up, take, take a look. We follow along. We will go through that. I'll, I'll, I will add some commentary along the way as we make our way through this chapter. Let's pray once again. Father, thank you for allowing us this time together in your word to, to, to learn more about you, to learn who you are, what you intend to do, your purpose, how we fit into that whole thing, what Jesus is doing, what the Holy Spirit is going to do. All of those, are, all those things are so important and, and you are important to us and we want to know you. We want to understand all that you have for us, that we might listen to you, we might connect with you, we might honor you in all that we think, all we say, all that we do. Guide us in this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. I have told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith. For you will be expelled from the synagogues, and the time is coming when those who kill you will think they are doing a holy service for God. This is because they have never known the Father or me. Yes, I'm telling you these things now so that when they happen, you will remember my warning. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer. But now I am going away to the one who sent me, and not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the Advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe me. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe me. There is something about uh, the idea of sin that is that people add their own definition. They 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 think the sin is not being in a particular political party or participating in certain mission groups or having. Uh, uh, certain foods or drinks, wearing certain clothes or not wearing certain, whatever it is that they have come up with, that, that's the sin. And if in their minds certain things are, are happening or people participate in certain things, they go, well, that's a sin, and you violated that sin, and then you, my friend, will not, you do not know God, and you do not have a future in heaven with Him, because you have sinned. What is the sin? We just read that. That Jesus is saying, the world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. 
It's refusing Jesus. It's refusing him. What is it that the uh, United States of America has decided to do? Now, when it began, talking about Jesus was the thing. Acceptable, it was to promote the kingdom, God's kingdom. Uh, there were other views out there, but that, that was acceptable. What is it today? Well, it's changing because of coronavirus, but what were people to avoid? Don't pray at football games. Don't pray at graduations at high school. Don't pray in Jesus' name. If you do happen to get away with a prayer, just say amen and call it good. Don't say Jesus. Why? Why is Jesus so frightening that people have to avoid it? And here he's saying, here's the problem. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. That's where it all starts. Get it right with Jesus. Other things begin to fall into place. It is the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who's going to come, who is going to convict the world of its sin, not believing in Jesus, presenting him so that people can change their lives. They can live differently if they believe in Jesus. It's Jesus who will resolve the other issues. Does Do the other sins matter? Sure they do. There are things that you know, we don't need people robbing one another or murder or we don't need those things those are violations of what is good and loving and right he wants to address those as well but he begins with get to know jesus believe in jesus and for those who do those other things begin to peel away and we begin to change and we become more and more like him more and more the way we were designed to be in the first place as human beings who, who will shine like the stars in the heavens. He's trying to move us in a whole new direction. And it begins with that relationship with him. We need to get past the idea that sin is some individual thing. We've got to get back to it is about him. About him, the living, the living one, the, the, the word who has become flesh and is dwelling among us. We need to believe him and our sin is the violation against God, not believing Him, not knowing God, not listening to the Holy Spirit, not even believing the Scriptures, which tell us all these things, the sin is not believing in Him. Verse 10, Righteousness is available because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. He wants to make this known. He wants to make known his great truth. He, he desires for us to know more about him, more about the life that he has for us. He desires for us to know the great truths that are just waiting, but we can't bear it. He's laying this on them. He's trained them for three years. They've seen his miracles. They've been up close and personal to Jesus for three years. And he's saying, I have more for you, but you can't handle it. The theology, the depth of the realities that I want to share with you are to make sense of history, of the current events that they are watching unfold, his dying on the cross, his resurrection, all of those things have a place. They can't handle it yet. The Holy Spirit's going to come. The advocate, the paraclete, he will come and he will teach them. He will lead them into those things. And, and then they will understand. Then they will know more. So he has more to say, more for them. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. See that interrelationship, relationship? God the Father connected with God the Son who is connected with the Holy Spirit and that information and those gifts and the, the resources and the abundance is coming through all the way through all of them as one, one God, united. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. 
That's what he's going to do. But he's going to tell us. The Holy Spirit's going to tell us as we get to, to connect with him that he will speak to us. That's what it says. He's going to speak. When, he's, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. So we've got guidance. He will not speak on his own. He's speaking. He'll tell you what he has heard. He's going to talk to human beings. He will tell you about the future. He's going to get a heads up on some things that are coming. Not just the second coming. What is coming? What is the future? What is the future uh, 10 days from now? 10 weeks? 10 years? What is the future in 10,000 years? And the Holy Spirit will tell us about the future. And He will bring glory to the living God by communicating whatever He receives. He's going to pass on. You can trust Him. Verse 16, In a little while you won't see me anymore. But a little while after that, you will see me again. Yeah, three days, He's coming back. Some of the disciples ask each other, what does he mean when he says, in a little while you won't see me, then you'll see me again. Oh, man, am I going to the Father? And what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand. Jesus realized they wanted to ask him about it. So he said, are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said, in a little while you won't see me, but a little while after that you will see me again. I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice. And no one can rob you of that joy. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the Father directly, and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. I've spoken of these matters in figures of speech, but soon I will stop speaking figuratively and will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world, and now I leave the world and return to the Father. Then his disciples said, At last you are speaking plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything, and there's no need to question you. From this we believe that you came from God. Jesus asked, Do you finally believe? But the time is coming, indeed, it's here now, when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. John chapter 16. There's victory in Jesus. He has overcome the world. He's giving heads up on what's coming, the resources, the resource of the Holy Spirit, the truth in Scripture, the revelation of more that, that sometimes we can't handle, but he brings more truth as we can. He is going to bring these truths into our lives so that we can know him better and we can have this joy that goes beyond anything we could have on earth, more than we understand right now. And he is bringing all of that because of this relationship that we have with him, with God the Father, and with the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. And he says we can ask the Father for whatever, using Jesus' name. We have a right in him to come and request whatever it, whatever it is that is going to honor him glorify him follow him help us to be obedient to him and we will have abundant joy he is bringing so much into our lives ah but those who don't they have sinned against god the, the father they've rejected the son they don't believe in jesus and he says, even for those who are being religious, who, who send out those who do believe in Jesus, 
This is because they've never known the Father or me. It is a sad truth, but it continues even to this day. And we are blessed to know Him, the one true and living God, Jesus Christ, His Son, who has come from heaven to earth, who is manifesting His reality and His glory on this planet among people who have recorded what they saw and heard and experienced through the power of the Holy Spirit, who is still with us, working in us and through us, and wants to show us even more than we know right now. Wow. What an amazing God. What an amazing opportunity. What joy. And on this day, we give him thanks. Let's do it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice on our behalf. Thank you for training the people that you trained. Thank you for touching the lives, men and women who believed in you, trusted you, followed you. Thank you for the impact you had on their lives then and how that it touched the world around them in that day, how it rocked the, the cosmos, that Satan saw it. He saw that you were glorified in them. It made him angry. It made the world angry. They took out their, their anger on them. But Lord, you rejoiced. And they rejoiced. And their joy was overflowing. Thank you for the things that you did in them, through them. Thank you for what you're doing in us and through us. Help us to see you more, to listen more closely to what you have to say, to follow you day by day by day. And we ask it in Jesus' name. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you again for joining online with this Grace Bible Church of Prior moment in John. And we'll see you again. Mm -hmm.